We're starting February with a bang. Philip Forsberg shines at the All-Star Game in Toronto. Even gets a shout-out from Justin Bieber. We'll recap his weekend, plus all the things we liked and didn't like about the All-Star Weekend in a special plus-minus on today's Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, want to start with a special hello to our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everydayers who tune into every single episode. We love you guys, and we appreciate the support you give us week in and week out. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at the Hockey News. Also want to mention today's episode brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and promo code Locked on NHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. All right, Ann. Uh, if you're a Philip Forsberg... Pretty good weekend for you, huh? Oh, uh, it just the the Smash Mouth song just plays anytime I see or hear Philip Forsberg this weekend because my friends, he is an all star. He got his game on and he went and played. Yeah. And what a weekend! I'm telling you, I don't want to brag and I can't because it wasn't me. But our guy Philip Forsberg really stole the show. I think at the NHL Awards. I mean, yes, there was Connor McDavid and all that, but but let, screw him. But, I mean, set aside the skills competition and let's talk about the three-on-three -three and who really kind of rose to the top. It's our friend Philip Forsberg. Yeah, I believe the final stat line for Forsberg was uh, three goals and assists over those two games. Had two in the first one uh, and then a goal and assist in the in the championship game. But, I mean, the, the biggest highlight for him was the Justin Bieber shout-out, right? It national was, national yeah. TV, Justin Bieber is like, hey, Philip Forsberg, kind of a good guy, huh? Yeah, and Austin Matthews mm -hmm. said, yeah. Now, it was interesting because um, Philip Forsberg was on, like, pretty much the Toronto Maple Leafs team with, like, a couple guys thrown in there. Yeah. So it was really good, though, to see that Austin Matthews and some of these other guys, you know, kind of got a chance to get to know somebody from another team. And, uh, yeah, Biebs is, is maybe a believer, but he's also now a, like, force friend or whatever we can do to Philip Forsberg's name. But yeah, Justin Bieber, like he's a great guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. And he ain't mad at hockey either. Yeah, it's funny uh, how many Maple Leafs fans after the game were like, uh, how do we get him on our actual team moving mm, sorry. forward? To sorry, which I think man. Anne is getting out the broom out of her closet and just gently shooing the <laughs> Leafs fans that's right out, uh, out away from uh Fort Ice Center so yeah no, move no along. nobody is nobody is going to be trying to lobby Barry Trotz no uh, move along y'all move any, along anytime soon uh so let's dive in to a bit of all-star weekend uh including more about Philip Forsberg's performance with a special all-star plus Minus. Come on. You guys know this segment. This is where we go through the past week of Predators hockey, highlight the things we like, give them pluses, and give minuses to things that we didn't quite like. In this case, it's everything that happened over All Star Weekend, the special edition. So, Anne, I know you would like to start with a plus uh, for more of what you liked about Philip Forsberg's game this weekend. Yeah, I do. I want to start out with a plus, obviously, for Philip Forsberg's performance, his goals, three goals. But here's the specific reason I want to shout out his goals. Those three goals really showed off what the National Predators have with Philip Forsberg. You know, he had one goal where he was in front of the net and cleaning up the loose change. And look, we've all seen that. Philip Forsberg doesn't look like he would be a strong net front presence, but that Swede is strong and can handle that kind of geography on the rink. So I love that he had that kind of goal. He had a breakaway goal, which we're like, seen it, done it. We know he can do it. 
And then his other goal was against Connor Hellebuck, who is one of the hottest goaltenders right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand at the All-Star game, the goaltenders don't try 100%. But uh, Philip Forsberg, it looked like there was no space. And Forsberg just sort of threaded the needle on his third goal. And literally, my husband and I were like, did that go in? Like, yeah. how did that get in? How did he sneak that in? So I loved not only did Forsberg kind of shine, but you really got to see the the breadth of his abilities and what he brings to the Nashville Predators. This is a guy who has such finesse, who has a very deceptive shot, who has great accuracy, but he also is completely comfortable playing the clean up the trash, take out the garbage goals, and he can do that just fine. So for me, that was a huge plus. We really got to showcase not just Philip Forsberg, but the different ways that this is a guy who changes the Nashville Predators. Yeah, it was as close as you can get to saying the word coming out party. Yes. Uh, without it really being an official coming out party. Because people, I mean, the guy's got an eight year, eight and a half million dollar contract. But I think there's, you know, people that watched him that it was just, you know, kind of got their first glimpse of, oh, this is how good Philip Forsberg can kind of be. Right. As a high end player uh, with high end line mates. Right. Um, so I think this was, you know, sort of, you know, everybody had heard the name Philip Forsberg, um, but maybe because he plays for Nashville, didn't quite, um, you know, grasp the breadth, like, you know, you could sort yeah. of, you know, grasp how good uh, he he is for, for this team. So I think, you know, this was a chance for him to show Case's skills in the national stage, you know, in the sort of the same way like Roman Yossi and UC Saros have been able to do in All-Star Games past. Right. Uh, and so, hey, maybe there are a few more fans now, uh, especially in the Toronto area, because he helped the Toronto Maple Leafs win the All-Star Game. That's right. Uh, who, you know, maybe have a little bit more of an appreciation for Philip Forsberg's game and, you know, maybe maybe a few more eyes. Uh, on the Nashville Predators. Uh, yep. Just please don't try to trade for him. You may not have him. Move along. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to give a plus to the skills competition. Okay. It took a little bit. Uh, let me rephrase that. The skills competition minus Nikita Kucherov. Oh, uh, well, yeah, we can dive into that one. Yeah. Um, what was our, you know, sort of biggest complaint with, you know, sort of these over the years? Like, it was just that the players weren't necessarily. They're not it. trying. They're, it's, yeah. it's they're not trying. They don't care. Uh, you know, they're just kind of there taking selfies and, you know, talking in, in interviews and stuff and, you know, just waiting for their tea time uh, to right. free up. Um, I think the skills competition, despite the fact that it didn't have any president, I think it was a good first step into doing something, you know, sort of unique kind of, it, you know, I thought it was going to be more of like a decathlon where everybody was doing every event and, you know, you'd take your best, right. you know, as fast as skater. And the, the way they did it at first was a little bit confusing, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it was. yeah but once you got into it um i thought it was fun like the point system and you saw like you know different players with different events um the players were actually trying which was sort of a nice change of pace um right. again minus nikita kucherov um you know but it's you know you saw like got you know you know a skater would fall down and then just have to try to you know whiz through the rest of the thing like actually putting a lot of effort into it you saw guys kind of, uh, you know, this passing competition, guys really being strategic about which of the little yes. dots they were passing at. Like, yep. you know, <clears throat> I think McDavid was like, I got to go for three every time. Or, um, you know, you saw a couple of guys, it's just like, no, nah, I'm just going to get like the easy one to get on the board first. Um, so it was, you know, guys actually, I think, you know, I think Connor McDavid said it. It's like, yeah, you know, I could use the extra million even though I'm Connor McDavid and making yeah. a lot. Like, I, th I think it was, I think it was the first step in doing something competitive enough with a good enough prize that players are going to want to take part of it again, unless they're Nikita Kucherov. Right. But I do think you hit the nail on the head because there it's a tricky thing in the all-star competition because you want to make a good product. You want to make an exciting product. You want to put something on the ice that's going to impress 
uh, NHL fans and invite and intrigue non-NHL fans who happen to stumble across it. So you want to put out, you know, a really good competitive product. The flip side of that is you also, the worst case scenario would be an injured player at the all-star game. So you have to find the balance of like, how can we make a competitive put out a competitive product that is intriguing enough that will force these guys to try, but also, you know, is not going to jeopardize their career and that it can also be fun. And, and I will say Connor McDavid and whoever else worked with him on this, I think they put together something that really got the guys interested. And here's the, here's what's real. Connor McDavid's getting married. Connor McDavid is going to play for that million dollars. Weddings yeah. are not cheap. My friend, I will. So it was, I thought, I thought they, they nailed it. Like it, it was interesting. It was exciting. And it was better than like, do you remember last year they would like try to recreate, like they had costumes and stuff and look as a theater major, I love a good costume, yeah. but it was not great. This was entertaining. Yeah, I agree. I think it was entertaining. I think there was enough drama. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think there was, you know, people were letting, you know, Leon Dreisaitl had it when he started botching the, the accuracy competition. Oh, yes. And then uh, you are standing there. You got to finish it. Ooh. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I agree. I think there is more, um, involvement, not just that, but I think all-star weekend, um, uh, as a whole, yeah. uh, more pluses and minuses from this week coming off, including, uh, something that happened before the players even took the ice for the first time. The NHL is going back to the Olympics. Come on. What do we think about that? We will discuss that, uh, in more plus minus in just one second. Today's episode is brought to you by sleeper. We are at the all-star break. Predators fans, and regardless of what happens the rest of the year, whether we sell everybody in tank or somehow make a miracle run to the Stanley Cup playoffs, either way, we can all still win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Philip Forsberg, Connor McDavid, Kale McCarr, and more will record more or less in their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more. In a given game, for instance, Phil Forsberg going to have over or under 0.5 goals. So basically, is he going to score a goal in the game? Will Connor McDavid have more or less than 2.5 uh, points in a game? Things like that. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. Again, you can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning Big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. Again, that's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, and it's more plus minus from the all-star weekend. Uh, we talked about a couple of things we did like. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about maybe some things that need some tweaking with some minuses. What's a minus from you this all-star weekend? All right, we've hinted around about it, but let's just have a full conversation about Nikita Kucherov. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and, we, and we've talked about it. Look, in the skills competition, Nikita Kucherov looked like he would rather be getting a root canal done by his mother-in-law. It just no interest in participating. Now, I don't know if he got the memo that like, hey, this is really trying to rev up the competition. I don't know if he was tired. Look, he's like the leading point scorer in the NHL right now. So he's got to be a little exhausted at the All-Star break. And, and I have grace for that. But just the... It was so juxtaposed against the Connor McDavid's and the other guys really competing. The Kucherov lack of interest was just glaring. And let's just say that Toronto has found a new enemy. 
<laughs> but you know, they they gave it to him. They gave it to him. And not only did they give it to him in the skills competition, they gave it to him the next day yeah. in the NHL All-Star Games. And I guarantee you the next time Nikita Kucherov shows up in Toronto at Scotiabank Arena, they're still going to be giving it to him. So, you know, look, and, and here's the thing, like no shade to him if it's not something that he wanted to participate in for whatever reason. But if you're in it, you got to be in it to win it. And so it was a little bit like bless Nikita Kucherov. But man, did he hear it? He had a chance uh, to win the actual All-Star game with a shot in the shootout. And my only thought was, <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> if he wins this on this play Ooh. right here. This is going to be the biggest troll move <laughs> I is. think that we've ever seen uh, in the history of the NHL All Star Game. Like, I mean, Kucherov had a chance to do the funniest uh, celebration. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, and he missed maybe because yeah. he wasn't warmed up from trying hard enough in the skills competition. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I felt like that kind of was like sort of put a damper on it a little bit when it really was something that the other players were, were pretty competitive and interested in. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I have to give a minus to those all-star jerseys. Woof. Oh Ugh. my goodness. I, I get it. It was Biebs designed. Probably he something. Did that? Like, yeah. That was Bieber designed. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah. Philip Forsberg now just trashing uh, Justin Bieber now. Um, look, it was... Uh, I think I said it last week where, like, the red one looked like Bill Elliott's McDonald's NASCAR <laughs> from the from the 1990s. But yes. once they were on the players, they somehow looked even worse. worse. Uh, like, the little... What's with the little, like, bubble on like on like their tramp stamp area that had their name on it and it the was, font yeah it was like they went and it was like they all wore their jerseys <laughs> got drunk and then went to panama city beach to have that tattooed onto the back of their jerseys <laughs> uh like the color like the colors just the, it just it was the colors were so loud that i couldn't hear what was going on in the game man yeah uh, it was yeah it was yeah, bad i mean it was I mean, I get it. Like it's, it's the all-star game and you have a chance to be a little bit more whimsical, wear some cool jerseys, but they were just, Oh, it was like watching, you know what it reminded me of? Um, go watch the mighty ducks D two, the mighty ducks, the movie uh -huh. and look at team Jamaica. That's what this reminded me of. It reminded me because in part of it was all of the primary colors, which wouldn't have been so bad, maybe, had it not been the combination. I'm with you, like the red and yellow ketchup and mustard. It was like a skating hot dog. I just couldn't, I couldn't look at it. Uh, the blue and white ones were a little bit better, but it reminded me of like an like a late 70s, early 80s baby nursery. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like those bright primary colors with the C and say toys and the like wooden telephone that you dragged behind you and it made noise. Like it just, I, it was so painful. It, and I really had the hope. I'm like, you're going to put it on a skating person. Like Connor McDavid's going to be skating fast and it's going to look great. No friends. It looked like Ronald McDonald. It was really, really, they were disappointing. They were yeah. so disappointing. Yeah, uh, maybe next year do better. Um, let's okay. Let's just let's do this. Let's take a minute and then yeah. let's talk about some of the announcements uh, from the rest of All Star Weekend because there's a lot uh, to dive into that, including the Olympics and what the NHL is going to be doing next year. Because there's some hot and cold opinions that we can have on those. That's coming up in just one second. Want to wish a happy Super Bowl week to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Look, if you are anything like me, Super Bowl Sunday is a big event. It's gathering all your friends and your people, making all your favorite football snacks 
placing some Super Bowl bets and watching some commercials. And look, if you are interested in trying that Super Bowl betting, FanDuel has so many ways for you to get a W or maybe two or three. So not only can you just bet on who's going to win Super Bowl 58 with FanDuel, but they also have bets for which players will score a touchdown. You can bet on how many points are going to be scored. They have first drive results parlays. They also have fun specialty bets like will there be a scoregami or will any offensive lineman score a touchdown? And hey, if you are new to FanDuel, this is the week to play. New customers can join today and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, and we are talking plus minus from the All-Star game uh, in Toronto over this weekend. And I want to get a, to a, for me, a big fat plus for the announcement uh, before the All-Star weekend. The players going back to the Olympics yes. officially in 2026 and also committed for 2030 uh, as well. Uh, and this needed to happen. Yes, this absolutely needed to happen. Um, for the past couple of years, at least on the men's side, there just really wasn't that sort of, you know, high interest in hockey. Um, I think the Olympics also really wanted the NHL to come back because, you know, hockey, both men's and women's has kind of been the marquee event of right. the Winter Olympics. You know, the one that, you know, for, you know, from, 2004 to you know 2002 to you know 2010 kind of driven the you know the ratings uh for for that show um yeah and i think it's just the interest overall i think just hurt with the lack of nhl and you know it's kind of crazy when you think about you know Connor mcdavid never suited up for team canada like Connor That's mcdavid's funny. never had a chance for gold austin matthews has never had a chance to suit up for Team USA, even somebody like Dylan Larkin, who's approaching 30, uh, has never had a chance to be in the Olympics. Uh, and you look at this sort of next generation talent, you look at all these young players that Team USA has, all these up and coming players that Canada has, uh, and also Connor McDavid. This is going to be a chance to see, I think, um, best on best representing their country with a lot at stake. Uh, I think this is going to be a really fun uh, thing. Yeah, I think this news was met with joy basically by everybody because how you have the best league in the world excluded from the competition at the Olympics just makes absolutely no sense. And you're right. You talk to these players, you know, in, in – you know, you ask them some of their favorite hockey memories and they talk about things like world juniors winning, you know, for their country. Like this is a big thing for these players to be able to represent their country, to be able to play on a different stage than just the NHL stage. And we saw some of the benefits at the all-star game. You know, you're going to build some relationships with players that maybe you don't you know, they're from your home country, but that you don't play with and you don't encounter all the time. So this is such a win for hockey. It is such a win for these players who may really want to do this. And it's such a win. Like you said, it's such a win for the Olympics because to exclude the, the best league in the world, you lose so much um, opportunity for new viewers or for, you know, NHL fans. You're going to put Connor McDavid on Team Canada you're going to get yourself millions more viewers. So this was fantastic. And I know that that overall the players have been wanting this. They are thrilled with this announcement. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the big thing is how bummed, um, you know, because the NHL announced it's like, hey, we're not going to go in, in 2018. And there's a lot of, you know, yeah. vocal outrage from the players. I think mean, Alex Ovechkin was the one that's just like, I might just go play for Russia. What are they going to do? Try to stop me? Yeah. And then, you know, the NHL started, you know, threatening fines and owners had to like talk to their players. And, you know, you kind of had a lot of players threatening to go rogue there. And, you know, you heard how disappointed uh, they were in 2020 when the Winter Olympics, I guess it was technically 2021, but, yeah. you know, when the Winter Olympics um, um, or 2022, 
math is hard at the moment. Right. Um, you know, when, when the Olympics got canceled due to COVID, you saw the disappointment from a lot of the players. And so this means a lot to them. It right. really does. Um, and, and you mentioned like there's something special about being able to sort of represent your country. I mean, it's like a bunch of all-star teams going at it. Like this means something to the players. You always see players go balls to the wall. Yes. in the Olympics, yes. which is why I think some owners wanted them to not go back. But, <laughs> you know, that's that's a different thing. But this this means a lot. This is going to be really fun for the fans. Uh, I agree with you. Um, I think especially when we had some really good tournaments, uh, this brought a lot of new eyes to the NHL. So I'm hoping it does uh, the same thing in, in this case as well. Yep. Um, let's talk about... Okay, let me just let me just say what the topic is. Okay. Uh, instead of the All Star Game next year, we are going to have the Four Nations Face Off uh, tournament between the U.S., Canada, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, it will be happen February twenty twenty five of next year. Is this a plus or a minus for you, Anne? You know what? I love the idea of something different, kind of throwing a tournament in there. But it feels like when you're leaving out some really good players and and, and some countries, and that's yeah. where it sort of feels a little bit like a minus for me. Like, I like the Same. idea of it, but I feel like you know, you're in, and, and I know there's a lot about, you know, Russia participating in things mm -hmm. as a country. And so I understand that, but I feel like, you know, you've got some really outstanding players from countries other than those four countries that are going to miss out on that. And so for me, that just feels a little bit, e, you know, yeah. that's, that's to me is what makes this a minus as well. Like yeah. the fact that you only have us, Canada, Sweden, Finland, um, yeah, like I get it. Like those are your four power teams besides right. Russia. Um, and there's a lot of talk that they, you know, the NHL limited it to four so they wouldn't have to deal with the Russia elephant in the room. Right. But you don't have to hide it. Like the, we know what's going on <laughs> in the world right now. Yeah. Like you don't have to be like, oh, well maybe nobody will notice there's no Russia in this. Like we, you can just say, we're not going to have Russia in it. And we'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. We see that. Yeah. Um, you know, like. I get it. Like it's going to be hard for basically a glorified all-star break to plan a whole tournament with, you know, eight countries and eight teams or anything right. like that. Um, I, I don't know, like maybe you do like a, like team Canada team world, like team USA versus, yes. you know, team I'd like team rest of Europe versus team Scandinavia. I, I don't know. Yes. But it's like, you know, you're not going to have Leon Dreisaitl in there. You're not going to have Roman Yossi in there. You know, yep. even, even some of like, you know, the, like where's Nikita Kucherov or Andre Vasilevsky? Are they just going to, you know, peace Watch. out? Although I think it's become clear Kucherov would rather be on vacation <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you know, I, I think there was I love I'm with you. I love the idea. Mm -hmm. I love that this little in season tournament is something fun, something to kind of wet our whistle for 2026. Yeah. But I think there is a better way yeah. of doing it besides just limiting it to four countries. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one more quick plus, Anne. Uh, it wasn't just NHL All-Star Weekend. It was Come NHL All-Star Weekend. <laughs> what to give a plus to Yaroslav Askarov. Let's go. Uh, in the AHL Skills Contest, <laughs> uh, the funniest uh, breakaway save or, or sequence of saves I think Come I've on. ever seen. So one guy's coming in on the breakaway. Uh, Yaroslav Askarov does a scar off things, basically dive out to mm -hmm. get the poke check. His stick, his stick just goes flying. Yep. Half of his gear goes flying. Yep. Uh, and then because it's so rapid fire, um, you, you have another situation where a player is coming down right after that. Askarov still doesn't have half of his gear <laughs> and then winds up making the save anyway. Yeah. Uh, fun, like the most like, a scar off esque uh, sequence of uh, sequence sequence of plays. I think you could have 
uh, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, Yaroslav Askarov went to the AHL All-Star Game and he understood the assignment. Did he win the the little trophy for goaltending? No, he did not. Did he win the hearts of everybody watching by being fully himself? Yes, my friends, he did. Yaroslav Askarov. Also, shout out to Spencer Stasny, who had a fantastic showing. He was second in fastest skater. Yeah. And did really, really well in hardest shot. And uh, so just a fantastic showing, fantastic showing from Askarov and Spencer Stasny. And of course, the game is tonight. It's at eight o'clock central time. Um, and I think it will be on NHL Network. I know it will be on AHLTV.com as well. So check it out. So much fun. The AHL competition last night was so much fun. But yeah, Yarrow, way to go and just show people exactly who you are. He was a delight. Yeah, fun stuff uh, all around uh, the league. Yeah this weekend uh well the preds are getting back to business uh after this uh they'll have the rest of the all-star break before they get back on the ice which means and it's time to start looking ahead to the second half of the season uh we'll also look back at the first half what we liked what we didn't like a lot to get to on this week's locked on predators podcast and uh where can people find your work you can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on social media at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find me at penaltyboxradio.com or read all my snarky tweets at underscore NS Morgan. That's going to do it for us on today's Lockdown Predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Back with an all new episode tomorrow. We'll see you then.